Hello world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischel. This is going to be episode 181 of my poker vlog. For this one, I have a bunch of hands to go over from the 1-3 streets, so we're going to get right into those hands. So we arrive at Sarasota, Florida, the one eye Jacks poker room. The biggest game running at the time is the 1-3 regular, which is a $500 max, which is what I buy in for before we get to the first hand of note. I have ace jack offsuit on the button with three limps. We're going to raise this up to $21. Can even go bigger if you want to play perfectly. I think 24 or 27 would be fine, but I choose 21. This bet does not thin the field too much. The big blind and one middle position player decides to call. So we end up going three ways to a flop, which comes 10, 6, 5 with two spades. Having the ace of spades feels pretty good when it checks to me. I think I get C bet here a decent percentage of the time. These opponents are likely to miss a lot, and if they happen to call a flop bet with like a pair of eights, maybe a weak 10, I can pile a lot of money in on any over card giving me a gut shot or top pair, and any spade giving me the nut flush draw as well as the nut blocker. So I start out with a $25 bet, and a middle position player raises to 75 I'm going to be brutally honest with you here, Mike. Given your track record, your options are going to be extremely limited. Not really what I was anticipating happening. Not too many people have check raises at the lower day games. It's a pretty face-up, straightforward game a lot of the time. So, thinking this opponent probably just has, like, pocket fives or pocket sixes and just has a set. I think I'm just going to let this one go. Seems bad to just C-bet and fold to aggression, but across the next, like, hour and a half of playing with this opponent, I never saw him check raise a single other time. So, we're just going to chalk this one up to he had it and we're going to move on from here. Following that, I'm in the hijack with queen 10 of clubs. With a button straddle, there's two limps. I raise to $35. Picking up $15 of dead money seems like a decent result, so we're fine if everyone folds. But on this one, the button decides to call. So we are heads up to a flop, which comes 10, 5, deuce, rainbow. No clubs. Flopping top pair, decent kicker. I don't want to have like 100% C-bet frequency. Additionally, the button I would consider to be on the tighter side. So thinking he's relegated towards like ace high holdings, maybe eights, nines, things such as that. I choose to check this one. I'm gonna happily include this hand in particular into my check calling zone because not too many runouts I'm gonna be worried about. When I check, my opponent checks it back. Turn is the six of hearts. Well, now there's two hearts on board. We need a little bit more protection. If my opponent had any two hearts, we can get value from that. Maybe a hand like pocket eights, pocket nines doesn't feel comfortable betting on a 10 high board but may be compelled to call facing a bet. So I delay C bet, down bet to 30, trying to get those ace high holdings in there, but this time they do fold. We take down a decent sized pot. When early position makes it 15, there's one caller. I have kings, I make it 65 because it's kings and everyone folds, but we take down a three bet pot. Before, I'm in the big blind with pocket 10s. With a bunch straddle, I raise to $15. The under the gun player 3 bets to 50. Might be the only 3 bet at the table besides myself so far. 10s is pretty strong. I think 4 betting is quite a punt, but they can happily call and reevaluate based on flops. So when everyone folds to me, I make the call. We are heads up to a flop, which comes jack high. Rainbow, 1 over. Somewhat neutral. My opponent does have ace jack some of the time. He does have over pairs some of the time. But my hand is pretty much a pure check call in this spot. When I check, my opponent checks it back. Well, that's pretty good. Think he has ace king, ace queen most of the time at this point. Turn is the four of spades. I do think my opponent will throw out a bet himself if checked to a second time. So we're going to check, lay the trap, happily check call with tens here when the flop checks through. But my opponent checks back the turn as well. River is the nine of clubs. And I do think my opponent has pocket nines some of the time, very infrequently, but it's not impossible. But generally, I think my opponent just has ace, king, ace, queen. And if I check to my opponent, I'm nearly certain he'll check it back. So we're going to go for a, a very small, thin value bet with pocket tens. I bet $35 targeting those ace high call downs, and we do get basically snap called. And I show, and my opponent has ace, queen of hearts. Definitely happy I went for value on this river. Definitely happy I got paid off. These smallish thinnish spots are really what's going to impact your win rate pretty highly across a poker session the one player who goes for these and gets them paid more often 
is going to be the most successful players at the table. Following that, I have Ace, Deuce of Spades in the big blind. When an early position player raised to $15, the cutoff and the button calls. This could be a squeeze spot. It probably functions pretty well as a squeeze spot, but 12 to win 60, I think just calling and trying to flush over flush someone seems pretty good. When we call, we do flop a flush draw on Ace, 7-3. Also a pair of aces, but maybe that's just overkill. I check as I don't have the betting lead. Definitely going to have this one as a check raise. Yes, when called, they're probably going to have a better ace than me, but we'll take our equity, our outs, our draw, and reevaluate when the time comes. However, this time it checks through. Turn is the 10 of diamonds, all right? I'm going to start betting myself. I guess no one should really have an ace. Hopefully they have a 10. Maybe even like king, queen, queen, jack is going to call a bet here. So I bet $25 small trying to get paid i have so much board so much equity that not really worried about any river card the button is the only caller and the river is another ace honestly i think like king high hands might call a small bet here so targeting a 10 just high cards really weak holdings i bet another 25 dollars this time my opponent snap folds that's such a shame so i suppose he had a draw as well and it missed unwilling to pay off so we win a pot, but could have been bigger. After that, the dealer puts out four aces on the board. Not that the hand was big or significant, just kind of cool to see. Don't see it all too often. I win another small pot before you move to the 1-3 deep stack, 1k max, and this is an action table. Let me give you a little backstory. We have a player who goes all in with 8-9 off suit, 8-10 suited, king 4 off suit, He's going all in with any two cards pre, so the first hand that I play, and he clearly wants to make the vlog when he gets purposefully in the camera angle, I make it 15, one person calls, he's all in again, I have ace jack, this is just like the easiest slam dunk call for $200 I've ever made, so once I happily make the call and the other player folds, he has pocket kings, well, that's bad. Full disclosure, it's not great. But that's fine, we still have 30% chance to win, and we're running it twice, so hopefully we'll get to chop this. First board is quite uneventful, no real chance. On the second board, I turn open-ended, feels like a good opportunity to chop, but the deuce of diamonds is going to cancel that, so we're about even on the session after winning a bunch at the regular table and then running into kings against someone who really should not have kings. But we win a small one before we start getting back on track. Now we have ace, ten of spades, a late position player raises to $15. On the button, we're going to three bet this one, 45, standard 3x, fine if we win it now, if not, we have a pretty good hand, we're in position, my opponent makes the call, and we are heads up to a flop of queen, queen, seven, two spades. Well, I'd say this board's better for my range, I could have ace, queen, just as easily as I have ace, ten, could have ace, king of spades, ace, x of spades, kings, aces, all these I think would like a small bet. So ace, ten of spades is going to be in there as well with a small bet of $30. Turn doesn't change anything. It's the nine of hearts. It looks like it's closer to my hand, but it's really not. I expect this opponent to peel with a lot of hands, including ace high holdings. So we're just going to keep betting here. If I had a queen or an overpair, I would keep betting. So we're going to bet with the flush draw as well. I make it $70 and this is enough to get it done. My opponent folds pretty quickly. If he decides to call, hopefully we just hit a spade on the river and life is a little bit easier. After that, I have ace king in middle position. I raised to $15. The big blind is the only caller, so we're heads up to king jack six rainbow. When the big blind checks to me, I think that the way he called preflop, he was very weak, nowhere near this board. So I'm just gonna check this one back. Would love to see this player in particular who just blasts off to be able to continue in the hand. Hate to fold him out. Turn is the king of hearts. All right, now it's his time to shine put it in there he could just open all in it's not impossible from this guy specifically but he checks to me well maybe a ten dollar little feeler bet might induce the aggressive actions we've seen but still he just calls all right river is the ace of diamonds you however are finished all right guy i can't have it you can just rip bluff it's a thing but nope, he checks to me again. Okay, we're going small. Maybe we can induce. Maybe we can get some of the money back from the king's hand. $25 is the wager. And after over 35 seconds, my opponent eventually calls. Claims he had ace-queen. 
Not sure I believe that one, but he does call and we get paid and we get a little bit back. Following that, I have Ace King again, and with one limp, the same player from the Ace 10 hand makes it $15. I'm on the button again. We're gonna three bet again. Somewhat dicey. I feel like this opponent's gonna eventually think I'm just picking on him, but he folds this time. This time I choose to show. No shenanigans are coming from me today, sir. I typically have it. Time for our next adventure with pocket tens. This time an under the gun player limps. I raise two twenty dollars in middle position and when the button calls the under the gun player ships it. A limp all in for $325 after I get the count and I am really in the blender on this one. This opponent had been mixing it up with the action player who was ripping 200 a lot and that's why he has 325 he's been ripping it a lot but most of those hands were played more standardly they weren't under the gun limp all in they're pretty much raise jam call you know just this one feels bad feels real bad in a normal game with no action the under the gun limp raise is just always aces or kings so i lean a little more towards that in this situation I also have a player who invested 20 and has like 120 left in his stack behind me. Thinking if I call, it's definitely going to go three ways. Also, if I fold, he's likely to call it to get good odds and just I'll get to see what happens anyway. I don't know. A lot of conflicting information is going through my mind at this point. This opponent, the hand directly before, got it all in with sixes. We know he's capable of doing this with small pocket pairs, but would he do it two times in a row, especially when the hand before the sixes did not hold up he had like a 500 hundred dollar stack and now it's down to 325 i don't know but i've been battling a lot to get some profit last time i made profit i took a flip with ace jack versus kings suppose now i'm risk averse not really in the flipping mood so i eventually let it go play on the button fold as well and the under the gun player shows pocket sevens you know it's not that easy so we were in good shape but could have always just flopped seven as well still a pretty big missed opportunity there luckily for me i went a hand with a pair of aces on a four flush board not really thinking i'm gonna win all too often which brings us to a next interesting hand i have ace 10 offsuit in the small blind under the gun limps again not my favorite move to see early position raised to 15 there's one caller i'm in the small blind i make the call as well big blind folds and under the gun just calls this time so we are going four ways to jack eight six with two spades i check kind of willing to give up because didn't have any real connection anyone can have sets and two pairs and better straight draws and all kinds of stuff but this time it checks through and when the turn is the queen of hearts i realize i just turned double gutted both straights would be very disguised if they hit pretty much nutted i would say so i start with a 25 dollar bet additionally maybe some jacks fold maybe a pair of eights doesn't like two over cards now i think this wins some of the time just not this time a late position player decides to call so we end up going heads up to river card which is the six of hearts board pairing cards are kind of hard to bluff on if my opponent was peeling with a six he's never folding some other hands might feel a little bit more comfortable like nines and pocket tens those might feel better with this run out to call down additionally this opponent in particular has made call downs with ace high that i've seen so not really the opponent i feel like trying to bluff against so i check and he snap checks it back he does have jack nine on this one so this particular opponent was absolutely never folding a jack no matter how much i bet on this river so did not win this one but we do have one final interesting hand where i have king ten of diamonds on the button under the gun limps plus one makes it 20. i decide to call on the button small blind sides a call and the under the gun player calls as well we are four ways to 10 8 8 no diamonds but we have top pair good kicker it checks to me into three other players two of which limped called i do think it's very possible one of these small blind or on the gun player could easily have an eight so not really willing to pile a whole lot of money in just yet as well as no flush draw need to protect against i think i can peel one and see what develops what develops is the turn is the three of diamonds and it checks to the pre-flop aggressor who bets 55 dollars one of the biggest post-flop bets i had seen at the table so far not gonna fold especially against this specific player i make the call and the other two players fold the river is the nine of spades and my opponent checks to me here you definitely need to go for some value you absolutely have to against the standard population of players they almost never would check here with an eight or a straight 
so your hand's probably good. Sometimes we value on ourselves against 10-9 specifically, but straight's definitely bet here, eight's bet here, so you gotta go for some value. In the moment, this was kind of the super action player. I didn't really want to bet like 45, 50, go for like the thin, small value bets I was going for earlier and have him just rip on me and honestly not know what to do because he could have air, he could have made hands. I settle on the passive approach and choose to just check this one back. Excuse me? Big mistake, need to go for value here. He shakes his head, doesn't really look like he wants to show. That's fine, I'll show. I win. Win another small one before I realize that it's time for me to leave. How's the pay? Not great, but the hours are worse. I'm in the game for $800, out of the game for $919. Across five hours equates to $23 an hour or eight big blinds an hour. Yeah, if you're interested in the app I use to track my stats, it's the Bink app. There is a link in my description for a discount. Highly recommend for anyone who's trying to take poker a little bit more seriously. Tracking your stats, win rates, hourlies, by location, day of the week, all that can be extremely helpful. Highly recommend. For this day, I had my chance to win. Had 10s all in versus 7s. Chose not to take that hand. I would say in general versus an under the gun player who limp jams, it's just always aces. Like you've seen plenty of times where the guy does it, just has aces, gets called, gets it all in wins. That move keeps working because people keep calling for it. Maybe against this player specifically who was willing to get it in, willing to take some flips, 10s is closer to a call, but I think in general that's just losing money long term. Either way, I still made a little bit of profit, happy with it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, do me a favor, leave a like. It would help me out. I appreciate it, and I will see you on the next one.